I've been asked quite a few times about how to go about doing a music NFT streaming revenue project. So I'm gonna talk about that in this video. Hey everyone, this is Barry from NFT Music Info. I hope you are well. So previously I actually released a new NFT music project, which was all about fans wanting to buy streaming revenue from my unreleased material. So that's what I'm going to cover in today's session. So let's get started. Okay, so just to explain what I mean by this streaming revenue project. So for the likes of Spotify and all of the other streaming platforms, this is about offering fans and investors a regular income of the streaming revenue that's generated from the streaming services. Now, as well as that, further down the line of starting my project, I decided to also include Bandcamp. Now, Bandcamp is a manual process to actually reward your music NFT purchasers with revenue for that. But it was important for me to also offer as much utility as possible. So that included access to a private area on the Discord channel that I had set up, which really helps kind of help with governance. So that means that buyers will actually also get to have voting on the Discord server about, say for example, what cover image I should use for that particular music NFT. So let's delve right in now and I'll show you what I mean. So what I decided to do was I created the project on OpenSea and I used Polygon blockchain because it's gas free. So I had two track examples on here. If I go to the description, what you'll see, a bit about what I am as an artist. So this part is my artist name, Cyber Friday. Now Cyber Friday is all about EDM music. So it's house, techno, trance, acid, all of that kind of stuff. I personally decided to call the music NFTs iNFTs because they featured a lot of utility. And I explained that they're quite special because they provide many additional benefits when purchasing. So for example, you earn revenue from streaming royalties and Bandcamp royalties as passive income. You also get support by supporting the artist directly and access to the Discord channel for queries. You got a sense of ownership because you got access to download the track as well. Now that's something that doesn't automatically happen with OpenSea, okay? If somebody purchases your music NFT, they're not purchasing the download of the track unless you have it in the unlockable content. There's also governance, so gaining access to a restricted private channel on Discord. Exclusivity, which is for private members, we'll hear first about new tracks. So on that Discord channel, whenever I was going to announce a new release, I could announce it via that. Scarcity, which is really important for music NFTs. So unsold NFTs will be burned to increase scarcity. Now, what that means is as soon as somebody's purchased one of my songs, one of the NFT editions, that then sets a 30 day time limit before all of the other ones are actually burnt. And by doing that, that makes more people want to participate. So you can mark it on Twitter and you can say in 30 days, this will no longer be available. Because what you have to do, you have to try and cut it off at some point so that you can set up the additional revenue on your digital distribution service. So we'll go into that a bit for later on. And also more revenue. So burnt NFTs will give the holders chance of having more percentage revenue. Now I decided personally, that 45% of my music of the percentage would go back to whoever purchased the music NFTs. So there were 45 editions for one song, 45 music NFTs for one song. If there's only one buyer and all of those other NFTs are burnt, that means one buyer will have 45% of the revenue. If all sell out, that means everybody has 1% of the revenue. So that really does reward people that want to come on early and actually purchase your music NFTs. So let's have a look at the music NFTs myself. So what I did is I put a snippet of the track on the first one I did, which was Invader. Now I used AI generated video for this one because I really liked how it, how it was. So let's quickly preview this track now. <laughs> OK, 
how you get the idea. And I decided to price them all for 45 editions at around $75. And one has actually sold. Now what I put in the reveal unlockable content is a link to the Discord channel. I asked them to complete certain information. For example, I wanted them to email me back with their name, their MetaMask wallet, just to confirm that it's them. Then I can actually check on OpenSea to make sure that they've got that music NFT. Also, they needed to register to my digital distribution site as well. And that way, um, and by having their contact information via their email, I'm able to then keep them updated just in case they're not interested in the Discord server. Okay. So I literally put in the description, this track is Invader by Cyber Friday. And what I did is you, when I created this NFT on OpenSea, I put the, I think it was the WAV version first, and then that enables you to put the animation. And it will just keep loop, looping as far as the, the song actually goes. Okay. So let's have a look at my other one. So if I scroll down, the other track I have on there is Ethereum. And remember, this is gas free, so that really helps. So if I go onto Ethereum, and this one was a lot cheaper this time, around $27. Again, 45 editions, exactly the same process. And I've got some images that will help you with that as well. So let's preview this track. <laughs> Okay, so you get the gist, gist with that as well. So, so that is my project. Now let me go into how I set this up. So just to kind of understand the process of what I'm talking about. The track is minted and listed on the blockchain. You then get sales from that music NFT. After 30 days of the first person or whenever you decide, you have control over this project. This is just what I did. So after 30 days of the first sale for that particular music track, all of the other NFTs that were unsold, all of the other editions were burnt. And that doesn't cost anything on the Polygon blockchain, but on Ethereum that could be very costly. So just bear that in mind if you're doing it for yourself. Then the track will be distributed to streaming platforms and I'll set that up myself as you typically would as a musician anyway. And then the hodlers or holders earn streaming revenue straight away. What I also decided to do was include Bandcamp revenue. However, that is a manual process. For an awful lot of people, they were not interested in streaming revenue. This is just from my market research after doing the project. People were saying, there's no point me doing this because you know it's gonna be pennies. But from my point of view, that's not the point. It was more about offering something else than just a clip of a song and a JPEG as a standard music NFT. This is providing utility. Um, so the track will be released as a digital single on the Bandcamp page. For any purchases from the release, you'll receive the same percentage as per the streaming revenue. So if it's 45%, it's 45% of the Bandcamp profits. And just to make sure that there's no kind of gray areas, I've just said, look, it's just for the single release on Bandcamp. Now, what you want to look for for a distribution platform for you to just release your music onto the likes of Spotify and everything, there's certain ones that can really help you with this. Now, first of all, I was inspired by DistroKid. Now, DistroKid seems to be the main one that has the feature of splits, which is exactly what you need. However, for me, it wasn't the perfect distribution service. The reason was that was because of the fees. So you had to pay 20 dollars per year to upload unlimited albums and songs. Now that's an absolute bargain, isn't it? However, the purchases of your music NFTs also need to be members as well in order to receive the revenue. That really troubled me because I'm not only charging the fans and investors the music NFT to start with, they then have to have an annual membership and you're then tied into that annual membership. Now, DistroKid help you with that because what they say is if you refer anybody, they'll only pay $10 for the first year. That's currently at the time of doing this video. But for me then, they're still paying $20 every month and I'm sorry, every year, and I'm paying $20 every year. And it just felt, mm, you know, I could have 45 people on this music project for one song. Think how much money DistroKid will be making for that. 
So for me, it wasn't the best method to actually use DistroKid. However, the splits feature was really good. It was very easy to use. You just put in their email address, they log in and register, and then they'll automatically get the splits of the percentage of income to their account. Personally, if DistroKid didn't charge the receivers of the streaming revenue that $20 a year, then I would have gone with Get Distro Kid because I really liked how the splits was done. So for example, it says automatically split payments to your collaborators, automatically route any percentage of earnings from any track to anyone, add your collaborators like producers, bandmates, managers and more. We'll pay them directly so that you don't have to think about it. As long as they're registered. If they're not registered, they're not going to earn the streaming revenue. From my point of view, it would have been good if they could have signed up for free and then maybe they were notified via email and then when they hit say fifty dollars then they'd just sign up just to get the money back but of course that's just a different strategy isn't it they say it's free for all distro kid members zero commission and you can edit the splits and percentages anytime so if you didn't burn those music nfts you're still able to change the split information after the release which is fantastic to know this is easy setup so you can focus on making music and leave the accounting to them. If you add non distro kids members to a split, that's fine. A 50% discount coupon will be instantly emailed to them. And it's literally just a case of adding in their email address. As long as they're registered, then they can do that. Now I decided against distro kid as I've already explained, but what I decided to do instead was actually use my typical digital distribution service known as RootNote. Now what I decided to use in the end was RootNote. It's what I typically use to release my music, in, um, independent music anyway, to streaming services such as Spotify, etc. So RootNote is great because it's free if you want it to be free. So if I go to distribution and create new release, you're able to do that very simply. It doesn't cost anything to get signed up like it does with DistroKid for $20 for the year, every year for the rest of your life. Um, so this is completely free. So just to let you know that you can either have a 15% cut that RootNote will take to release it for free, or you actually pay per release. So that's up to you how you want to do that. But in terms of the revenue sharing, let me talk about that now. So it says, are you a record label with multiple artists on the book? Do you need to share the money from one of your collaborated releases with another artist? Well, we can manage this for you. So you, this can be applied to any or all of your tracks on a release by filling out the form below. So it's not as clever as DistroKid, but the results will still be exactly the same. So for example, on DistroKid, you'll actually have the form. And if you put in 45%, for example, for them, you'll, you'll get 55% automatically done. This is a manual form that you have to complete. But it says to share revenue with another artist, all they need is their own RootNote username and they'll automatically receive their share of stats and earnings, saving you the hassle of reporting and multiple payouts. So this is a form that you complete. They can sign up for free and then it's just a case of you putting their details in and all they really need is a PayPal address and email address and that kind of thing. It's very simple to sign up to the root note. Incomplete forms won't be accepted because that can include the risk of error. So you need to make sure you fill everything out. You can only submit applications for releases and tracks on your own account. Make sure the artist has an active root note account set up in order to receive their revenue share. You will not receive an email to let you know when this is applied, so please make sure you fill it out correctly. For releases under the free distribution model, percentages apply only to your share after the root notes 15% takings, so bear that in mind. Submission deadline 20th of each month for the following month's payment cycle. Any requests made after this won't be applied until the following month. So you put in the username of yourself, the UPC of the release, whether the revenue share applies to all tracks, and then when you click on next, this is the exciting part. So it says list the root note username of the artist you're sharing revenue with and the percentage that they will receive. Please check usernames are correct with as incomplete or incorrect usernames will lead to the submission not being completed. Example, user one is 10%, user two is 30%. So you literally do it like that on here. Now it's got three artist rooms here to put in. 
but if you need to add more, then you've got this box here. So it says, if you need more artists adding, list the usernames for artists and the percentage below, and then put in your email address and submit. It's as easy as that. So I just think this is great. For me as the project personally, because I do a very specific niche of electronic music, it hasn't sold very well. Perhaps I haven't pushed it enough on Twitter because I've got so much going on. But there are people out there that just aren't interested in Spotify revenue. But then if you're offering other utility, then I think there's more incentive to actually do that. But at the end of the day, they can be making potentially 45% for the rest of their lives on this track. And if it blows up, if they help to push, out, push it out as well and promote it, then that track could be really successful. So it's something to bear in mind. And this is doing it yourself without a label or anything. Now, what I'm hoping to see in the future is that Web3 will really take over in this space and you'll end up having Web3 digital distributors. Maybe you can get revenue for the actual music NFTs themselves. So like, that would be really cool. Perhaps the revenue doesn't take months and months to come through like it does traditionally in Web 2.0. Perhaps this time it's gonna be instant in Web 3. So there's, there's a couple of platforms looking into this at the moment and trying to get this on board. But as far as I'm aware, this is the way to do it at the moment. So I hope you like this video, hope it's made sense to you, and I'll speak to you on the next one. Take care, bye.